Wander Wealthy Podcast, episode 103. Hello, hello, you all. Welcome back to another episode of the Wander Wealthy Podcast. My name is Tess Wicks. I'm the host, and today we have a solo show. So I wanted to take a second today and talk to the online business owners, entrepreneurs, and self-employed folk out there. This podcast episode is really going to be for you because if you couldn't tell by the title, today I'm going to share with you how I manage my business and personal finances for wealth building, goal achieving, and guilt-free spending. We're going to talk about why it's so important to consider the full picture when you're doing one or the other. And by that, I mean whether you're doing your money management in your business or your money management in your personal finances, you got to think about everything. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to dive into what I've been doing since I started my business. Plus more so recently what I've been adding and what I've noticed has been helping me a lot along this journey of kind of figuring it out as we go. Are we all kind of doing that? So here's what we're going to cover. I'm really going to give you guys the full download on the processes and just maybe it's like a brain dump of what I do when it comes to managing these two behemoths. And the reason I wanted to start talking about this, and I'll probably get into it near the end of the show, but I just really feel like when you are in charge of managing your own business and your own income, things get a whole lot more complicated. Not only from the actual practical financial standpoint, but also from the little inner self-talk, what's happening in between your two ears, limiting beliefs, goal setting, overwhelm standpoint. Money can be an interesting topic when it comes to work. We have a really hard time separating the idea that income and money in general should be separate from the work and the impact and the service that we're doing and all of that should be separate from our own personal self-worth especially when you are in charge of making your own money paying yourself managing both a personal and a business situation and going from there so I just feel like it gets messy and I kind of want to be that person that can help you figure this stuff out because there's not a lot of help out there. So I know if you are a nine to fiver, you have someone else paying your income. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you are tuning in. And if you want to continue listening, I do think this will help. But this is definitely going to be speaking towards those business owners, entrepreneurs, and people who are self-employed, even freelancers, independent contractors. Here's what we're going to cover. First, I'm going to talk about determining goals. Because that is always so important, especially on the personal finance front, which gets so often neglected when you start running your own business, whether you realize it or not. Because I think like freelancers, independent contractors, it's a slow transition into being like, oh crap, I'm actually a business owner. I have to pay taxes and I have expenses that I can deduct from my income. And there's so many more nuances to it. And in that same regard, we get so detached from realizing that we need to take care of our personal financial goals. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about how I've set up my systems, both on the personal front as well as the business front, how I've implemented money dates so that I can keep things front and center without letting them take over my life and how I've scheduled bigger money check-ins for doing some fun things but also keeping up to pace with some of those bigger goals that I'm trying to make sure I'm on track to achieve. I'm also going to talk about how I do a hell of a lot of mindset work and how important that is especially if you are in charge of your own income to overcome limiting beliefs, separate work from money from worth, and so many more things. So let's dive into the stuff, the good, good stuff. Oh, before I get into that, I do want to say if this resonates with you, if you're like, hey, there's a lot of good things in here and a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing, I won't have a lot of time to like really dive into. So I'm going to kind of breeze over it. But if you're interested in kind of expanding this more and getting 
a better understanding of how you can start spending guilt-free. I feel like a lot of us have a lot of guilt wrapped up into spending our money when we are in charge of running a business. So if you want to have peace of mind in your business and your personal life, you want to spend guilt-free and you want to start implementing some of these better money behaviors from systems to money dates to whatever else you like from this episode, then I encourage you to sign up for my guilt-free spending system workshop. Right now, the website copy that's on the web page is a little different than what it's going to turn into. So I just want to give you that heads up. I just have been doing so much work on the back end with some other things. I haven't gotten around to updating that, but I will. And all you have to do is get on the wait list. If you get on the wait list, then I will send you an updated email when I plan to run the workshop, which I'm shooting for end of May. So we're pretty far out, but this is like all part of this bigger thing that I'm going through and this road that I'm going down. And I just want you to know if you are a business owner, entrepreneur, self-employed, freelancer, independent contractor, yada, 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 then this might be the best thing that happens to you in this springtime. Maybe this year. That would be great, right? So go to wonderwealthy.com slash GFSS. It's short for guilt-free spending system. And you can just sign up for the wait list because the page will be changing and I will let you know what those changes are or I'll let you know when that page is updated so you can go check out what is fully going to be included in the workshop. A lot of it will remain the same, but some of it I have to tweak because Originally, when I ran this workshop, it was for those with a nine to five with a full time income that they do not have to worry about issuing their own paychecks or running payroll or paying their own taxes for the most part. But this time around, it's going to be a little different. And for this now specific audience of self-employed. If that feels like you and you resonate with a lot of what I'm going to get into now, then go on in, sign up for the wait list. I really want to explore this kind of avenue with you. Okay, so the very first thing that I do, especially when I kind of have my annual reset of really looking at my money, but this is what I did back when I was an employee and it's still pertinent, is setting my personal financial goals. When I work with my clients in a one-on-one setting, whether they are business owners or people who do have a nine to five uh, regular W-2 income, I make them sit down and fill out a lifetime goals list. This is like everything they could ever think that they want to achieve. Now this feels overwhelming because when you look at like what are the costs of those goals, it can feel maybe discouraging if you compare that that to the income that you're making. But it's really important just to get all that stuff out of your head and onto paper because if we just keep it in our head, we're going to constantly think about it, but it's always going to be like a, well, maybe someday, but I haven't really ironed that out quite yet situation. And sometimes it's just the act of writing the goal down, putting a timestamp on it, whether you think you're going to achieve it or not, and putting the dollar amount next to it just to make it a little more permanent. Just that one step. And that is really important. The next thing that I look at is what are my non-negotiable goals that I want to be making progress towards now? And that is really important for me because when I went to start my own business, the whole goal of it was for me to make an impact, but then on the personal front, also be able to make an income to replace what I was making in my nine to five job in a way that it also allowed me to have the time, the location, and the freedom of choice. So time freedom, location freedom, and freedom to choose whatever I wanted to choose, which kind of reflects back on time and location freedom as well. But that was really important to me. And I think that's a big reason why a lot of us get into business for ourselves is we are also pursuing that in addition to, for the most part, some form of impact, making a difference in the world, providing service to people, or giving them something that's going to totally change the trajectory of their life. So figuring out what your personal goals are though is so important and so many of us just sacrifice our own personal goals for the sake of our business which to me is very much the wrong way to go about business because if your business isn't taking care of you such that you can live a sustainable life you're not going to take care of your business in return. It's going to end up feeling like a big ball of resistance that then you're not able to see that runway, that clear pathway of making more of an 
income, more of an impact, and really pursuing the dreams that you probably originally had when you set out to run this business or create your own income. So my non-negotiable goals really boiled down to I still wanted to make sure that I could make investments into my retirement account. And that's like the last thing that most self-employed business owners do is think about retirement. But for me, being an ex-actuary, that was really important because I wanted to make sure I was still able to save for long-term wealth building. And that's a big, deep road we can get down in a future episode or within my workshops. But it is super important to not neglect the fact that you have a future and it is uncertain and you may not be able to do Although you probably think you are going to do this work for the rest of your life or you're going to work for the rest of your life, period, there's so many things that can happen and having some sort of safety net is an important thing to have. So for me, that was a non-negotiable that I was still contributing to this safety net, to this long-term investment wealth building strategy. Some other non-negotiables for me were having a travel fund, having a weddings and gifts fund, just because I knew I was going to inevitably be spending money at the end of the year, and obviously to pay for my cost of living, to pay for my fixed living expenses, plus having some sort of buffer to be able to spend. Above and beyond that, What was really important for me, but I quickly achieved that, I had actually achieved it before I left my job, was having a really solid emergency fund. And a lot of self-employed people often don't have one of these. And this is what gets you feeling really scared when it comes to managing your business is especially if you have kind of a seasonal business of you have high income months and then low income months and you also have high cost months and lower cost months, things get really unpredictable and feel really inconsistent. And that then reflects on your actual life because personally, you're probably living based on this income as well. It was important to have an emergency fund for my personal life so I could supplement my income for any lower income months or just months where, you know, I ended up making a big pivot and things were really quiet and dry. Having that emergency fund was important to me and I was fortunate to be able to do that, but not everyone is. And so that's another one on a personal front that I would highly, highly, highly recommend even before all else, before the retirement, before the, you know, weddings and gifts goal. That's something that is definitely necessary. And if you are self-employed, it's probably best to go beyond six months, at least six months of fixed living expenses. So you can make sure to maintain your life if you do have a series of dry months. But going beyond that could be important as well because you can eat up a couple months pretty easily compared to someone who does have that more predictable income. Although we all know that nothing is certain and nothing is predictable, it does tend to be much less predictable when you are running your own business and things are seasonal, cyclical, or you know, you're know you making a big transition. Once I figured out what my goals were and what sort of contributions I needed to be making towards my goals each month or each year, I also looked at those fixed living expenses, then I determined how much I was going to pay myself. Essentially, my business had to pay me this amount of money in order for me to feel that freedom and flexibility that I was pursuing in creating the business in in the first place. Now, this takes time to get to, and it takes time, especially if right now your business isn't making enough money to be able to pay you this amount of a paycheck in addition to paying all the business's bills, paying taxes, and anything else that you're trying to do within the business itself. So it is sort of an adoption curve but even just knowing what that number is so you can start striving to it is really, really important. Once I was finally able to get to the point where I could pay myself the goal that I had set out for myself, then I budgeted my personal income in a way that gave me guilt-free spending money. This is something that I teach now in the Guilt-Free Spending System Workshop. I taught it before. I'll be teaching it now even for self-employed folks. And I think it's super, super important to figure out ways that you can spend your money without guilt or shame wrapped around it. For a lot of people running their own business, they feel guilty even taking a paycheck in the first place just to pay their regular living expenses, let alone buying something, God forbid, a new pair of shoes or a new bag or, I don't know, getting their nails done. 
every single month. And so getting to that point was really important for me. And it's really important for me to help my clients get to that point too, because Again, it's so funny, but we usually get into business because from the personal standpoint, we're chasing after some sort of freedom goal, freedom of time, place, and choice. But also we want to be able to remove that income cap. We want to make big impact and provide service that changes people's lives. But we also want to see that value exchange. Otherwise, we're not really running a business. We're more so either operating some sort of charity when in reality charities do make money or we're doing a hobby and we all know that we've all been told that in the past if you haven't been told that now you know and so your business is meant to make you money and it's not meant for you to feel guilty about spending the money that your business provides but so many of us get stuck in not knowing if we have enough money in the business or enough income coming in that we can get to the point of paying ourselves an income and paying ourselves an income that also allows us to spend money guilt-free. So it's like when you're running your own business, it's an extra layer on top of just having guilt-free spending money. And that extra layer is just guilt-free paying yourself the money that you deserve from your business, essentially giving yourself your own salary or paycheck from your business without feeling guilty about it. Now, as I said, a lot of people don't know if their business is capable of paying them the paycheck that they're looking for or even how much their business would be able to pay. And that's why it's really important to also set up systems in the business. So in my personal life, I did the goal setting. I figured out what was non-negotiable. I analyzed all of my fixed living expenses and added on top of that the savings and investing goals that I wanted to be able to reach to figure out how much I needed to make on an annual and then a monthly basis. And that helped me determine how much my business ideally would be paying me eventually. Then I could obviously spend more guilt-free if I could add a little bit of buffer on top of all those goals and expenses that I needed to be making each month. So I got the personal end figured out and I implemented a lot of multiple savings accounts as well as my anti-budget which is now my guilt-free spending system and that all worked on the personal end so I set up those systems as I've talked about in many of the podcast episodes of this podcast but then I went into the business and had to figure out okay how do I know how much I can pay myself how do I know how much I can be saving for taxes or how much I can realistically be spending when it comes to my business expenses what I do is I follow a very simple system I'm sure many of you have heard of Profit First, which essentially is a multiple bank account system for your business bank account. When I implement this very simple system, I can figure out how much I'm able to pay myself because I already need to take a percentage of all revenue to set aside for taxes. I know that I have to be able to cover all of my costs and I try to keep the costs under a certain percentage of my revenue. But then I also have to put a percentage of my revenue to my own pay. And the goal is to basically get my revenue high enough or get some of my business expenses low enough so that I can pay myself that goal amount that I need to on the personal front in order to cover all my personal goals. Now, this is one of those topics that we could take another 30 to 60 minutes to expand and explore, but we don't have that time. So we're going to move on from that. But essentially, it's a very simple system. It's based on percentages, and it helps me determine how much can I reasonably pay myself based on the revenue that I'm currently making. The other things I do in my business is follow a rhythm by implementing money dates. I've talked about money dates before, and a lot of people were like, wait, what are these money dates that you speak of. So I feel like this is a really good time to share what I do on my money dates. I have money dates twice a month. These are where I go in to my business bank account. I add up everything I've made in revenue since my last money date. And then I apply those percentages to figure out how much do I need to send to taxes? How much do I send to profit? How much do I send to my operating expenses account? And how much do I get to pay myself? Again, that's where I can then test. Am I in line with those personal finance goals? Am I able to pay myself that amount that I've like to get paid or am I a little off somewhere and that then also helps me go in and correct figure out what do I need to do over the next 
15 to 30 days to correct this problem. So I go through and I make those payments. Then I also go into my personal accounts and I start setting up those transfers if they're not already automatically going. So based on how much I paid myself, I can then determine how much am I going to transfer to, for example, my weddings and gifts goals, as well as my travel goal, as well as all of my long-term investment goals, which I have many. If the month wasn't as great as it has been in the past, so I'm not able to transfer as much, I might cut back on that. But usually I try to make sure that I have enough that I can transfer the amount that I had originally planned. And of course, I also make sure that I have enough money to cover all of the expenses that I'm going to incur before the next money date. So my money dates are always on the 10th and the 25th of every month. And this just makes certain, again, that I'm having the money to be able to then cover all of my costs, which typically I line up my bill due dates for the 15th and the 30th, 31st, or the first of every month. So, you know, the end of the month and midway through the month, I adjust the due dates. So I always make sure I have money in my accounts to pay those personal bills. This also helps simulate a little bit more normalcy in terms of being able to pay myself on a regular basis like I used to get when I had my 9 to 5 W2 job. Having a rhythm helps me have kind of the feeling of having a regular paycheck, helps me organize my expenses and bill payments, and helps me make sure that I'm regularly and automatically or sometimes having to manually adjust transfer money to savings and investing so I can ensure that I'm hitting my personal finance wealth building goals. In addition to this, within my business, I in a way follow a budget. Now business expenses can be very weird compared to personal expenses and what I mean by that is a lot of business expenses we tend to pay for more on an annual basis, although some do get paid on a monthly basis. And generally, if you are an online business owner, your business expenses aren't usually that much. And so you can really figure out how much do I really need on a monthly basis. I would annualize it and then break it down into 12 chunks and figure out how much do you need to set aside into your business checking account every single time you get paid and what is that as a percentage of revenue and you would basically project that onto maybe last year's revenue but then tweak as you go to make sure am I making enough or am I setting aside enough so is it a percentage issue or is it an overall top line income aka revenue issue where maybe you're not able to hit your goals or you're setting aside way too much, but you actually don't need to be spending that much. So figuring out what that is, but also making sure that you're following the budget that you set for yourself when it comes to your business. Because for some of us, we get a little bit carried away and like to treat our business like we would our children, which jury's still out on whether we should do this for our children either, but we tend to spoil our business and basically just never say no to the things that we believe our business needs when in reality, that may not be the best thing for us. I have here then that after I implement that rhythm, follow my business budget, then I pay myself. But You already know I do this as part of the rhythm. I figure out what do I pay myself, but then beyond that, I give myself bonuses. This is the best part about implementing a system like Profit First because you are able to immediately guarantee that your business is going to be profitable by setting aside money as a percentage of your income or revenue into a separate savings account, which is now going to be your profit account. The coolest thing is that when you hit your scheduled big money check-ins, this is what I have set up for myself. So my money dates are two times per month. It ensures that I'm able to issue myself a paycheck. I can set aside money into specific accounts, but I also have scheduled bigger money check-ins, which happen once per quarter. And they always happen at the end of the quarter. So Q1 ends at the end of March. Q2 ends at the end of June. Q3 ends at the end of September. And Q4 ends at the end of December. And what I do during these bigger scheduled check-ins is... First, from a business standpoint, I look into my profit and my taxes account. 
months because twice a month for the past three months, I've been figuring out what percentage I need to set aside into taxes and profit. Now, those accounts have probably grown to a certain amount and I can look into my taxes account and pay my quarterly taxes, assuming I've been able to save enough to cover the quarterlies that my accountant and or your tax preparer has told you to pay in every single quarter. Of course, you don't have to pay quarterlies, but then you'll pay a penalty. So, you know, it just depends. People argue either way, but I like having that peace of mind that I at least have the money set aside for this time period. This is one of the biggest issues I see with self-employed business owners, entrepreneurs, yada, 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 is the realization, especially within those first couple years, that they have to pay taxes, but also this feeling of frustration when they do have to pay taxes, even if they know they have to pay them and they've been doing it for years, but still never really being prepared for this time. I love this time when I get to pay my taxes. And that has been this huge shift for me. And it actually just makes me feel like, hey, I'm making money. This is a good thing that I'm paying taxes. And I would love it if I could help self-employed folks get into that mindset as well. That's something that I'm really aiming to do in the future. In addition to that, like I said, I look into the profit account and I take half of that profit balance and I issue myself a bonus or what in the bookkeeping world you would call a distribution. This is where I add even more to that idea of guilt-free spending. I've basically figured out how to detach myself and my personal income and what I am able to give myself from my business from the kind of survival ship bias that we have attached to our business and always feeling like it needs all of that money and all of that cash. If you're running a healthy business, it doesn't necessarily need that cash. And this is a big soapbox I could get into, but I'm not going to <laughs> because I think a lot of us have been looking at how we need to operate our finances within our business and how we need to treat our business especially if you're in like the online, more so coaching space, we're often doing it wrong. I'll just leave it at that. So I take that profit distribu distribution as a bonus, as a way to go for running your business like a total badass, way to be rocking out and actually making an income, paying yourself, paying your taxes, paying your business expenses, and here is that quarterly treat that you get. And you know what? It might be $50 some quarters. Other quarters, it could be $500. It could even be $5,000, just depending on how much my business is making and what I choose my profit percentage to be every single quarter going forward during those money dates that I'm participating in. Now, this bonus is literally that guilt-free spending money that you get to go and spend on whatever the heck you want to spend it on. And then you leave the other half of that original balance you saw in your profit account inside of the profit account to continue to grow so that you can always have some form of buffer in your business bank account as a whole in case you have a special investment that you want to make in your business or you know you need to cover some costs because maybe this month or this quarter's income was a little light and so you need to help buffer that cost. So the profit account also becomes this emergency savings or what I like to call buffer account for your business in addition to also providing you with that bonus. This is what profit is, is that excess cash inside of your business that isn't meant for anything specific yet, but can be someday. So you can use half of it to reinvest, but the other half you should definitely take as the business owner for being an awesome business owner and doing this work of running a healthy business. Business. Now that is not all I do during these scheduled quarterly check-ins. I also really like to look and make sure I'm on track with my personal financial goals. So I check my investment accounts. I don't always check my investment accounts because I think that's an unhealthy habit to be in. But once a quarter, I do try to check in and just making sure I'm still on track. I don't need to do any rebalancing and I'm following the investment advice that I give myself, which is the investment advice I give everyone in the invested program, which is an online program I have for those who are looking to embrace and take advantage of this wonderful tool that we have called investing in order to build real wealth. And that is for business owners or 
individuals who have a W-2 regular nine to five job, whoever you are, the invested program is perfect if you're looking for that next step. I'll link it in the description of this podcast, but that is beside the point. I like to check in on my investments though, because I think it's super important for me to keep my eye on the ball of Where am I going and how far have I come over the last quarter? I also look to just make sure nothing has gotten away from me in terms of my spending. If it has, I will get more on a a more strict budget. I don't budget every single month because it's just not necessary after you do budget quite a bit. It's also not necessary if you don't have any very specific aggressive savings goals. If you do, then budgeting is always going to be helpful, of course. But for me, typically during these quarterly check-ins, I'd see has things gotten out of control to the point that I should implement my budget again for the next month or two? And I check and see, do I have any specific aggressive savings goals that now I need to ramp up? So I'm going to get back on that budget. So I do that kind of analysis uh pressure check, if you will. And I decide, what am I going to spend my money on? What am I going to spend my money on that I've been setting aside for this guilt-free purpose? And where's that going to go? And that is that feel-good stuff that everybody needs when it comes to managing their money. And if you're not quite there yet, which you may not realize, you might be there. I think a lot of people surprise themselves that they can be there by just making a couple tweaks to actually get to a point where they can pay themselves a good income and they can spend money guilt-free, but they just haven't done the work, implemented the system, or even done the math and looked at it to realize that they are there. The last thing that I've done and more recently have done a lot with, and I would say I've dabbled in this before, but not to the extent that I do dabble in it now on more of a regular basis, is mindset work. I think mindset work when it comes to money, especially if you are a business owner, is so important. I've been embracing this idea that personal development is business development. And I don't know where I heard that, but it's kind of been this mantra that has been coming through podcasts, social media, and just anywhere I look, I start realizing that working on yourself is so important when you run a business, when you're in charge of your own income, because there are so many things that can cap us from reaching our potential. And that most likely comes in the form of our own stories that we've consistently been telling ourselves, which then turn into limiting beliefs. This is something that I've had to do a lot of work on. It hasn't been as obvious for me, and I think that's why it took me a long time to get to the point in terms of how my mindset around money is somehow limiting me in my ability to make more money. And the reason I say that is because I'm a money coach. I'm a podcaster. I frequently talk about money. So to me, I'm like, money is no big deal. I'm good with money. Money is great. Money is easy. And I truly believe money is easy. But I do have this story that I've held on to for far too long when it comes to work and how although money can be easy, work has to be hard. And if you want to make easy money, you got to do really hard work. And that has kept me limited in terms of the type of work that I want to do and how, you know, I always think work has to feel like really hard labor. That's a a family mantra that has been with me for a very long time when in fact that is totally out of alignment with the actual work that I do do and the messages that I want to share with how money can be easy and how work can flow and feel really in alignment. If you guys listen to my podcast at the beginning of the year I talked about my intentions for the year and you know what I was really going to grasp and hold on to as I went through the year and one of the two mantras was flow into action which is really that idea that you know ideas creativity the work that I'm doing I want it to flow to me and then for me to take action with intention take action when I feel most in alignment. And in a lot of ways, although business has been really great, I've been booked out in terms of clients and I've been able to prove that there is a form of ease in creating the business that I've wanted to create. It's also not felt totally in alignment with 
this idea of flow into action. And so that's something that I'm willing to embrace because I have proof that money is easy. I have proof that, you know, I can feel abundant in terms of paying my taxes, spending guilt-free, having these systems and, and doing this stuff, you know, doing the money stuff in a really easy way. But I have so much work to do in terms of work and how work doesn't need to be hard and laborious, especially when you run an online coaching business. It's very different. And it can be easy. Work can be easy. Money can be easy. They can be separately easy. They can be easy together. And that then doesn't have to mean anything about my self-worth and who I am. So those are, that's kind of like a brain rattling off of a lot of that personal development work that I've been personally doing. But I think, you know, when I ran the last guilt-free spending system workshop, we did talk a lot about those stories and those vows that we've made to our family from when we were children, the vows of loyalty and rebellion that we've made to their money stories and whether we've decided to embrace those and drive them into our future or our present life and hold on to them as personal beliefs about ourselves, or if we've decided to rebel completely and entirely against them, which doesn't always help us either. And really what we had to do and what I've had to do and what I tasked the members of the workshop to do is just bring those stories to light. Figure out what those stories are and identify if you've taken a vow of loyalty or a vow of rebellion to those stories and if they are limiting you in whatever way. Figuring out what's really holding you back. What is limiting you from an income potential, from a work potential, and how that all intertwines with both what you believe you deserve and what you believe you can make in terms of personal income and the life that you want to live on a personal level and how that reflects then through your business. Because although we want to just pretend like our personal finances have nothing to do with our business and how our business finances have nothing to do with our personal lives, I can say with 98% certainty, if you are running your own business These things are linked and sometimes they're linked in a way that's not working for us. But even if we figure out how they can work, how to build a healthy system-based, really good business that flows with the finances and we can figure out that personal life, they're going to be linked whether you like it or not because you are one person or you are a partnership and the money is going to flow from the business into the personal life and you might flow it back into the business. And so those two things are linked and we need to get a handle on both of them. And that's something that I've done a lot of work on and I really, when I started my business, I had a lot of those systems at play already and I just have been building off of it. And so that's why I do personally come from a place of money is easy. This whole process, this whole story for me and journey has been an easy one in terms of money. Are there other things I have to work on? Absolutely. And that's why the mindset work has come into the picture over the past year now and I've really been honing in on it to make sure that I can continue to leverage the systems I have in play but also that mindset work on top because it is so important if you want to kind of break some of those ceilings that we've already built for ourselves over our heads that are saying you can't make more you can't do more you can't have more and I truly believe that is entirely false so that Breaks down in a lot of ways with the mindset work, avoiding looking at your finances, avoiding setting big outrageous goals, avoiding that dreaming and reconnecting with why you started this business or why you went out on your own in the first place. And there's a lot of work that we can do there as well. Okay. That's a lot of information about how things flow through my personal and business life, how I manage my finances from the whole picture. And I just hope it helps inspire you and empowers you to get a handle on your situation, realize that you do need to look at it as the whole picture and how important that is. And if you're wanting to and ready to start making positive, impactful changes in your financial life on the business front so you can impact your personal life, so you can impact the rest of the world, and you want to start feeling that feeling that money truly can be easy, then I invite you to 
join us in the guilt-free spending system workshop. Like I said, it's not revamped yet. It will be revamped specifically for business owners, entrepreneurs, self-employed folk. It's really going to help you figure out how to bring your personal and business finance into the same picture. Realize that they do have an impact on each other and understand how you can remove certain guilt or other limiting beliefs when it comes to your financial systems. Because a lot of us feel guilty. A lot of us business owners feel guilty when it comes to spending our money, no matter how we slice it. And I want to take you away from that. I want to help you feel that money really is easy and show you how it can be done. So go to wanderwealthy.com slash GFSS and I would love to see you on the wait list and I will let you know when I get the new web page up and when everything gets updated and let you know what you can expect inside of that fun week-long workshop. All right, my friends, thank you for tuning in to another episode. I know this is different, but this is a place that I think I will be continuing to go down. That road of helping and making an impact for those who are in charge of their own income and really don't have a lot of resources when it comes to people helping them not only with their business finances, but also their personal finances. Because so often we have people doing one or the other, or maybe just, you know, there's a lot of personal finance stuff out there. But my life and what feels in alignment with me is really building a brand that is authentic to what I personally am experiencing. And my personal authentic experience is building a coaching business, building an online business where you have to manage not only your personal finances, but also your business finances, where you do have the freedom or you are working towards the freedom of choice, of time, of space. And that really feels Like this is where I can make the biggest impact. So I'm excited to see and explore what this new path, this new journey can take me. This isn't like an official announcement of where I'm going from here, but this is just kind of treading in the waters and seeing what can come up. So I'd love to hear from you. If you do have some words of wisdom, feedback, encouraging things to share, please reach out to me. Come and share the episode and then you can send me a message or just share it on your Instagram stories. I love Instagram. So add me at Tess underscore Wix and tag me in whatever you want. Send me a message. I love talking to people through Instagram as well. Ask me your questions, give me your feedback or your honest remarks. And I hope to continue to connect with you there as well as potentially in the workshop and any other way that I can continue to make an impact and be of service to all of my lovely, lovely listeners and students and clients. All right, that is all. Thank you so much again for being a wealthy wanderer. And until next time, I hope you wander wealthy.